Forget outer space. The true aliens are waiting right here on Earth. They live just beneath the surface, in a world of crushing darkness. At first, the ocean seems familiar. Sunlight, blue water, life as we know it. But as we descend, the rules of biology begin to break down. We are entering a realm where survival demands a monstrous transformation. Why do these creatures look like they crawled out of a nightmare? It is not to scare you. It is simply the only way to stay alive. Welcome to the Twilight Zone. Here, the sun is just a memory. To survive here, you must become invisible. You must become a ghost. But in the deep, invisibility is not enough. The darkness has eyes. Red light cannot reach these depths, so being red makes you invisible. Others choose transparency, glass bodies that cast no shadow. The hatchet fish is flat as a razor, vanishing when viewed from below. Predators here look up, hunting for silhouettes against the faint surface. So prey evolved glowing bellies to match the light from above. The bar AI fish has a transparent head to see through its own skull. It looks bizarre to us, but it is tactical perfection in the gloom. Eyes grow massive here. They must catch every single photon of light. Some creatures hijack others, turning bodies into mobile bunkers. But deeper down, eyes become useless. The midnight zone awaits. In the midnight zone, sunlight is gone. The only light is living light. The anglerfish is the icon of this nightmare, a trap set in the dark. That glowing lure is a colony of bacteria enslaved to attract prey. Curiosity kills in the deep. Follow the light and you meet the jaws. The dragonfish uses a glowing red light like a sniper's night vision. Most prey can't see red. The dragonfish sees them, but they can't see it. Some scream with light. This jellyfish flashes to attract a bigger bully. It hopes the bigger predator will eat its attacker, a risky gambit. The vampire squid is not a hunter, but a scavenger of the drifting dead. Here, life is a constant game of hide and seek with high stakes. The pressure here is crushing, like an elephant standing on your thumb. This is the blobfish. In its home, it looks like a normal fish. Bring it to the surface and gravity destroys it. We call it ugly. It has no muscle. It is made of jelly to withstand the immense weight. Hard bones would snap. Air bladders would implode. So they evolved without them. The giant isopod is a pill bug hacked by gigantism and freezing cold. Deep sea gigantism turns small crabs into long-legged monsters. Metabolism slows down here. Life moves in slow motion to save energy. They don't need to look good. There is no one down here to impress. Form follows function. And here, the function is simply not to be crushed. Food is rare. If you find a meal, you must never let it escape. The viperfish has teeth so long they curve back towards its own eyes. The gulper eel is mostly mouth, a swimming stomach waiting to be filled. It can unhinge its jaw to swallow prey twice its own size. The black swallower's stomach stretches until the skin is transparent. Gluttony is a virtue here. One meal might have to last for months. The goblin shark looks prehistoric, a living fossil of the deep. Its jaw shoots out of its face like a spring-loaded trap, alien horror. 
The fang tooth has the largest teeth relative to body size in the ocean. It bumps into prey in the dark, then snaps the cage shut. Finding food is hard. Finding a soulmate is mathematically impossible. The male anglerfish is born with one mission, find a female or die. When he finds her, he bites on and he never lets go. His body dissolves, he becomes a permanent parasite, a sperm bank. It is not romance, it is efficient, brutal biological fusion. Others evolve to be both male and female, no partner needed. Life finds a way, even in the most hostile environment on Earth. The ghost shark drifts by, looking like a stitched together doll. Every inch of this place is designed to test the limits of biology. But the deepest nightmare is yet to come. Welcome to the abyssal zone, the floor of the world. The tripod fish stands on stilts, waiting for the current to bring food. It is blind, motionless, and patient, a statue waiting for a crumb. The Dumbo octopus looks cute, but it swallows its prey whole. Even the cute ones here are ruthless killers. Rat tails patrol the bottom, scavenging the falls from above. Near thermal vents, Life explodes, powered by toxic chemicals, not sun. These vents spit out water hot enough to melt lead. The Pompeii worm survives heat that would boil any other animal. Yeti crabs farm bacteria on their hairy arms. They grow their own food. The frilled shark is a living dinosaur, unchanged for 80 million years. Its teeth are like needles, designed to snag soft-bodied squid. The siphonophore is not one animal. It is thousands working as one. Some reach lengths greater than a blue whale, a living drift net. It is beautiful, but its touch brings instant paralysis and death. The deep-sea lizardfish is the ambush predator of the abyss. Some worms here release glowing green bombs to distract enemies, a biological grenade thrown in the dark. This is the headless chicken monster. Yes, that is its real name. It filters the mud for food, drifting like a ghostly red bag. Why do these faces trigger our primal fear? Perhaps because they look like distortions of ourselves, uncanny, wrong, nature's rough drafts that were never deleted. The stargazer hides in the sand, face up, looking like a buried mask. It can deliver an electric shock to stun you before it swallows you. The hagfish produces slime that chokes sharks. One bucket of water becomes a bucket of slime in seconds. The lamprey is a suction cup of teeth a vampire of the water. It latches on and grinds away the flesh, pure parasitic horror. These are not monsters. They are survivors of the impossible. We have explored less of the ocean than we have of Mars. Every dive reveals a new species, a new nightmare, a new wonder. The big fin squid, caught on camera, standing like a tall alien sentinel. It watches us, silent, drifting, a ghost in the machine. But the scariest thing in the deep isn't the fish, it's our trash. We have turned their nightmare world into a landfill. Now we come to mine their home, to destroy what we don't understand. These creatures survived the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs. Can they survive us? That is the real question. When the lights go out, the ocean belongs to them again. Razor teeth, telescopic eyes, glowing lures, elastic stomachs. Nightmare looks are just biological engineering at its finest. In the dark, beauty is not visual. Beauty 
is efficiency. Evolution doesn't care about aesthetics. It cares about dinner. These creatures are time travelers, keepers of ancient secrets. They remind us that life is stubborn. It refuses to be extinguished. They are the masters of a world we are not welcome in. We look at them and see monsters, but to them, we are the noisy, bright, destructive aliens. The abyss stares back, and it is hungry. We return to the surface, to the light, to safety. But don't forget what lies beneath your feet when you swim. The ocean is deep, and it is filled with teeth. A thin blue line separates our world from theirs. The monsters are real, and they are waiting in the dark. We have only seen 5%. What else is down there? The biggest monsters might still be undiscovered. If you enjoyed this dive into the abyss, hit like and subscribe. Click here to explore more mysteries of the natural world. Sleep tight and stay out of the water.